Hi everyone, this is Gwen and welcome to my sewing and DIY channel. Today I'll be talking about this blouse that I made using a vintage 1950s sewing pattern, the McCall's 3730. This was published in 1956. Um, it's size 14 for a 32 inch bust and the description of the pattern says Mrs. Suspender Jumper and Blouse. Easy to sew. I started by checking the final measurements on the sewing pattern and then I ironed my butcher's paper, I ironed the original paper pattern and then I began to trace the pattern out before making all the modifications to the pattern. This entire process of grading took me quite a while because I haven't graded a bodice in a long time and I had to reference a few websites and books to make sure I got things right. Okay, at this stage, I have graded both the front and the back pieces of the blouse. Um, and I'm going to show you the difference in size. So, that is the original pattern. And uh, I'm doing this in the evening, so this is just pure indoor lighting. And that's the graded pattern, because you can see how much it's shrunk, right? There is so much reverse engineering going on, I wonder if it's even actually worth working this pattern at all, or maybe I should have just like drafted my own. And this is the back of the blouse. Some of the adjustments that I've done for the front are small bust adjustment and hollow chest adjustment so and I have also made the darts smaller so they call them tucks instead of darts because they don't taper at the end I'm not sure how I feel about that kind of design I've never done this kind of design before after grading the pattern I've done a little bit of a you know check to make sure that everything's in the right place before I start cutting into the fabric so things like oopsie things like making sure that the shoulder seams match up see so that's the shoulder seam matches up making sure that the arm seams I think that's how you say that word it's still the same length as before, as the original, I mean, um, because I'll, I'll be using the original pattern for the sleeves and um, what else? Oh yes, and I also checked to make sure that the side seams align, side seams of the bodice align as well. So I just did another check. Um, of the measurements and I was checking the side seams to see if they meshed up and it seems like I completely don't need the side dart at all. And so after spending a whole day on grading the pattern and then also another day triple checking the measurements, I finally got to cutting the fabric with my pattern pieces. So I kind of messed up the center front line where the buttons are supposed to go and the fold line for the facing. Um, so as you can see, there's this weird excess over here because I thought I was going to fold it more, but ah, it's okay, I'm just going to cut it off. So that's that. Very sad that I no longer have the word black and white over here in the facing, hidden here, but that's okay. I'm supposed to have more of this little bit of facing here, but because of the modifications that I made, it's gone, but that's okay. All right, here is the moment of truth. I've cut the front and back bodice pieces and I still need to cut the sleeves. And because it's a puffy sleeve design, it's a lot bigger than the usual sleeve. And then there's the sleeve facing and then there's the button band, the sleeve band. Ugh. I was saying that this is the moment of truth because I've been really really hoping to have enough fabric left to make a pair of matching shorts. If I could squeeze a pair of shorts out that would be super sweet. I really love 
a matching set. So last night I just started casually reading the instructions for the blouse and then I just suddenly realized that I've completely missed one of the pattern pieces. So I realized that I've completely missed this back neck facing. The back facing comes around this way. Yeah, I gotta do a little bit of a fixing. Okay everybody, all the pieces are cut now. Front front, collar, collar, um, sleeve band, sleeve band, sleeve band, sleeve band, neck facing, back of the blouse, and the sleeves. Ready to start sewing. Okie dokes. So I've cut up a little piece to patch this mistake up. Um, so now the facing for the front button band of the front of the blouse will connect to the back of the neck face. So sometimes I really feel like the modification of the pattern and the cutting of the fabric really takes forever. But once it's done, um, when it comes to a really simple blouse like this, the sewing is going to be really um, a lot easier compared to the whole process of getting the fabric ready. So I'll be showing you how it transforms from these flat pieces into the garment as I start sewing. Now, because I have a full-time job, on the weekdays, I only get to work on my sewing in the evenings after work. And sometimes I only really just have the time and energy to work on just one component of my sewing project. And day five was spent on just the collar. I had a bit of trouble getting the edges of the collar lying nice and smooth. Um, I started off by cutting notches, as you can see, but that didn't work. And I ended up finding that just leaving one eighth of an inch around the seam allowance is what really helped to make the edges of the collar nice and smooth. I'm not really following the instructions uh, step by step. I'm really just basing it off of what I know and um, what I remember from reading the instructions when I started the project and at this stage I decided that oh you know what I think adding interfacing to the button slash buttonhole facing is probably a good idea to make the garment a little more sturdy probably should have done that earlier but better late than never so I'm just done with hemming the blouse and it's done if you can look over here uh, I think I'm really only just left with the sleeves the buttons and the buttonholes um, and I can just feel myself starting to slow down because those are the things that I really don't like doing when it comes to sewing. Buttons are fine, they're kind of therapeutic when you just watch something and sew them on. But um, I need to soldier on. And if you hear that humming in the background, that's my oven, my pizza's done, so it's time to take a break. Let's have a look. Ooh, yeah, looking good. Okay, the cheese isn't toasted enough, so I decided to pop it back in and uh, let it just bake for a little while more and in the meantime let's try this on sewn the sleeves in and I really like how it's looking so far um, yeah it really wasn't as hard as I imagine it to be I have this thing about anticipating challenge when I think that something's gonna be hard I try to procrastinate and leave it to the end and more often than not um, it really doesn't end up to be as bad as I imagine it to be so I really need to stop doing this thing where I procrastinate and push something challenging to the end. But anyway, let's not ramble on. I am just left with sewing the buttons and the buttonholes on the front of the blouse. So I'm just gonna put this on quickly and show you how it looks. Oh god, I'm stuck. 
Oh, and also I've hand basted um, the facing onto the front and back pieces so I don't have to like always have to like eh, push it down and push it in when I'm wearing it. This is still from the, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, the unfortunate fix that I had to do at the start when I didn't cut the cap pattern pieces right. This is the neckline. This little space here is two centimeters. And then this yellow marking is the first buttonhole. And then I'm gonna zoom out right here. This pin here, that's the natural waistline. This is two centimeters. This yellow marking here is the final button. So we have one gap or you can call it space. One space, two spaces, three, four, four spaces. So here are the measurements. The distance between the first and the last buttonhole is 11 inches. And I've divided it by four to get 2.75. So this is 2.75 inches. Marked it out and I'm ready to sew the buttonholes. Before sewing the buttonholes on the blouse, I like to do a mock-up just to be sure that I like how it looks and I've got the tension and everything right. I usually sew my buttonholes using the one-step buttonhole function on my sewing machine. And then I like to hand sew my buttons on. And I do that by um, aligning the left and right pieces together and then sewing the first few stitches through the buttonhole and this really allows me to make sure that the buttons are in the right position. And here it is, the finished blouse. really happy with this project and I'm really happy that my modifications turned out um, to fit me exactly the way that I want it to fit me. I'm definitely going to be transferring these modified pieces um, so that I get a clean copy that I can use again and again. Um, but I still like to keep the modified piece just so I can look at it again and um, review how I did all the little adjustments like the hollow chest and the small bust adjustment. Um, I think the only thing that I would change about this pattern if I were to make it again would be to cut like half an inch off the tip of the collar. I mean looking at the envelope it seems like the collar is not supposed to overlap but for some reason despite not um, modifying the neckline of the original pattern my collar has like half an inch of overlap. I think it's supposed to just meet right at the very tip. Um, it's not very obvious and it's really not a big issue, but it's just something that I would probably consider if I were to make the pattern again. I really like how the big buttons turn out to be such a nice feature for the project. Yeah, I just, just like the sleeve band, just like the puffy sleeves. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm still kind of trying to figure out what format I want my sewing vlog to be like. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or if there's more parts of the sewing process that you want to see more of, you can leave a comment below so that I can read it <laughs> and consider it. Um, stay tuned for the next sewing vlog which is coming in about two weeks time. I try to post every fortnight or so. Um, I'll be making a pair of shorts to go with this blouse so keep your eye out for it. Stay tuned for my next sewing...